So here's what we've got, everybody. Again, this is arithmetic reasoning unit. Again, if you're in the program, this is unit five, distance equals rate times time. And so for those of you who, again, are feeling confused or you know not really feeling like they have a solid sense of direction, just please go ahead and save this link that I'm going to put into the chat box right now. I'm going to go ahead and put it in. I'm going to um, pause the chat box for just a moment because simply put, uh, this is basically our free program trial for a full week. It gives you 100% full access to the program for a week for free, no credit card required. So if you want to join tomorrow's class, Wednesday's class, and you also want to get access to the courses and the progress reports and just see and feel it all out, there it is, risk-free. All you have to do is confirm your email and phone number and you're good. So I'm going to take five seconds, five, four, three, two, one, boom. If you click the link, great, you made a good choice. If you didn't, well, I don't know how else to help you raise your score. So I'm joking. So with that, let's go ahead and move forward here. Let me unlock the chat box and let's get to work here. Let's get to work. So my party people, let's break it down. We are dealing with this first question and arguably, you guys tell me if you agree, this is the easiest of the four questions that we've seen so far. Do you guys agree or disagree with that statement? Okay, yes, a lot of people agree. Okay, good. So let's break it down. Let's show you how this really works. So there's, there's just one thing that you need to know about these types of questions and how to know that you're dealing with distance equals rate times time. So anytime that a rate is mentioned, it's some form of distance, rate, and time. And before you continue, just remember, you can get a free week to our full program, no credit card required. All you gotta do is text TRIAL to 833-321-0182. Do that real quick, get a free week, join all the classes, and raise your score. Um, you know, there could be a weird mix, making it look like a proportion, or making it look like a Y equals MX plus B, but if there is a rate involved at its core, it can be solved as a distance rate time question. But the real question is, okay, sure, if I have a rate, it's a DRT problem, but how do I know that I'm looking at a rate? My party people, answer the question. What's the main key word that tells you you're dealing with a rate? That's right, the word per. The word per, and we're not talking about cats. So the word per, like miles per hour, even dollars per hour, that's also a rate. A rate is just telling you how fast something is moving along, whether it's an actual object or if it's something intangible like uh, someone's bank account balance. So again, the word per gives a way that you're dealing with a rate. So in this problem here, I'm not gonna go through the whole you know, three steps to work problems right now, just for a quick moment. But when we look at this little blue highlight, when we zoom on in and we see that it says 70 miles per hour, that's what gives away that this right there is a rate. Everybody, yes or no, does that make sense? That is a rate, again, 70 miles per hour. Make sense? Cool. That's the one big lesson you need to learn from here. Um, well, there's going to be one more big lesson um, in terms of when we have multiple rates at the same time, really understanding situations. But really, it's very straightforward. So let's take a look here. Let's start from the beginning. With every word problem that we do, we always want to start with the question itself, um, the question sentence. We want to understand what's going on. We want to understand what we're supposed to find. So what are we supposed to find? That's the first question. What am I looking for? Always go to the sentence question where it says, how long was the car traveling for? Everybody, in one word, in one word, what is it that we're looking for? I told you we're doing distance rate time. In one word, what is it that we're looking for? How long was the car traveling for? Because that might not be explicit. That might be subjective. We might interpret that in more than one way, right? Because how long something is, I mean, that could be distance, could also be time. Where do we look to really solidify this, everybody? 
No, because I could say how long is the fence. Right? You could say how long is the fence? How long is the movie? Means two different things. So where is it that we can look? That's right. Yep. The answer key. That's right. That's right. That's right. When we take a look at the answers, A, B, C, and D, they all say the word hours after the fact, meaning that we are dealing with time. Everybody, do you agree now? Do we see that? Again, the answer choices are all time. We are looking for time. That's what we're looking for. Again, keep things simple. Keep things simple. Don't overcomplicate them unless there's more information to handle. So next up, okay, let's read through the information. Let's see what pieces we have. And we see that we have here. A car traveling at an average speed of 70 miles per hour eventually travels 840 miles. But we see here again, the average speed was 70 miles per hour. And we already said earlier that that is a rate, but pop quiz time, what is it that gives it away again? Well, how do we know that that's a rate again? That's right, the word per. And for the student in the chat box asking how long will it take to learn all this? A lot longer if you continue asking that instead of paying attention and working. So here we are, rate equals 70 miles per hour. And then we see the next phrase here that says, hey, it travels, eventually travels 840 miles. What is that going to be, everybody? The 80 or 840, excuse me. What does the 840 mean? Some of us here are saying distance. And yep, that's true. Because the unit of measure, we see it right here. It is miles. So again, it could be feet, miles, any amount, really. Distance is any amount that you're trying to accomplish. And so, yep, there it is. That's our distance. And that equals 840 miles. So if you're sitting here saying, okay, cool, coach, I get it, but how do I actually solve it? Well, this is where you need to understand how to actually not just memorize your formula, but know how the formula works. What am I plugging in where? So when we check out our formula, we have again, distance equals rate times time. And so if we check things out, we just need to put where things belong in the right place. Notice that we have time that we're looking for. So I'll go ahead and keep that blank. I'll keep that blank. Everybody, what am I replacing the R with? Oh, Jordan, that's what's up. Hey, Jordan, congratulations. Going from a 26 to a 79, four weeks. That's what's up. That's what's up. I love that. Hey, Jordan, I'm going to send you a you know, direct message here. I want to celebrate you, Jordan, because you, that's definitely a, a story definitely worth putting up on the website, just like everybody's successes. So just read that message right there real quick. Please go ahead and reach out to us. So with that, woo, man, Jordan, this was up. Happy Monday, guys. Happy Monday. So 26 to a 79 is awesome motivation. And thank you for sharing that. I know some people here needed that. That's what's up. So everybody, let's rein ourselves back in. I'm excited. Let's rein ourselves back in. What are we replacing the D for distance with? Hit me. What are we replacing the D with distance? What is that going to be replaced with? 840. That's correct. Appreciate you, Carol. So cool. We'll have 840. And then everybody, what are we replacing the R with? Hit me. Yeah, that's going to be 70, 70 miles an hour. That's the rate. And then we leave the T by itself because that's time. So for those of you who were a little unsure of how to set up the equation, this is your setup. Yes or no? Are we feeling good about the setup so far? Are we confident that we know how the setup happened? Especially those of us that were confused before. Especially those of us that were confused before. Cool. All right. 
And so, whether this is your first or 50th YouTube video of mine, it doesn't matter. Why don't you join me for a live class? That way you can ask questions, raise your score, and get the job you want for free. Again, I host classes once a week on Zoom, typically on Mondays. So go ahead and click the link up there or down here somewhere, register for free, and you get my free practice test that has video solutions so you can learn from every mistake. That's what it's all about here, my party people. I want to help you succeed, so don't hesitate. Sign up for free, and then let's get back to this problem here. Let's keep raising our scores. Now, is anybody here feeling nervous about actually solving the equation? Is anybody here feeling nervous about actually solving? Yeah, try dividing. No, not nervous at all. Not real nervous. A little bit. I love equations. Boy, all right, cool. <laughs> all right, so here's what we're going to do. We're going to solve this equation now because this is all that's left to figure out what that T is. So we need to first ask ourselves, look, you know, if you're in the program, remember, uh, unit seven of the math basics, that's all about solving equations. That's something you should be doing before hopping into this. So here's what you want to do. Equations, solving them are all about working backwards. So if you look at what's happening right now, we see that it's 70 times T. Okay, cool. 70 times T. To get rid of the 70, we have to do the opposite of multiplying by 70. And that's going to be dividing by 70 on both sides. So here's what we do. Again, with equations, whatever you do to one side, you have to do to the other. So if we divide by 70 on both sides, booyah, we see that we'll cancel out on the right side, leaving us t equals 840 divided by 70. And so if you go ahead and simplify real quick, this is really going to be 84 divided by 7. Everyone, 84 divided by 7 is? That's right, Jay, you were. Yep, that's going to be 12. And so there's our answer. Booyah, and we are good. So T equals 12, and that would be 12 hours. And there we are. So before you pay any huge amount of dollars or money to anybody claiming that they can help you pass the ASVAB, you should always consider what they offer for free. With us, we're gonna be offering our full program for free for a full week. All you gotta do is do that right there or scan that QR code and you'll get access to all of our classes, practice problems, courses, everything for a full week so you know exactly how it works and you have the exact confidence that you need to raise your score. Get started now. I'll see you in there.